In this podcast, I'm going to debunk myths about sleep. I'm so good at sleeping, I can literally do it with my eyes closed. Sleep is so important to you for your mental and physical health. This never becomes more apparent than when you first become a parent. I remember when I became a parent having levels of exhaustion that I'd never experienced before in my life. It doesn't matter when you sleep, it's more important that you just get the hours in. Apparently this is completely untrue and all the studies show that if you can get your body into a regular pattern of sleeping at night and not during the day, that is the optimum conditions for good sleep and getting to sleep. It's possible to function just as well on five hours sleep. How much sleep you need is very much personal to you, but from the research I did, the general consensus is somewhere between seven and nine hours seems to be the perfect balance. A shorter period of sleep than that has been linked to obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and high blood pressure. Older people need less sleep. Apparently aging can affect someone's circadian rhythm, their wake to sleep pattern, which in turn can make it harder for them to sleep as long. Apparently that said, they need just as much sleep as everyone else. Watching TV can help to get you ready for sleep. Probably for the majority of us, watching television or or more likely scrolling through your social media feed is probably how a lot of people these days wind down after a day just before they go to sleep. Apparently it has the opposite effect. If anything, it's more likely to stimulate you. And the more stimulated you are, the harder you're going to find it to go to sleep. Drinking a glass of milk before bed will help get you to sleep. You may well have been given warm milk as a child, or you may drink cocoa before you go to sleep, but apparently there's no evidence to show that a milky drink before sleep will help get you to sleep. Snoring is harmless. According to the research I did, occasional snoring or light snoring can be fairly harmless, but consistent and loud snoring can be a symptom of a condition called ONS. This is a condition where people experience short pauses in their breathing or shallow breathing. It's not great, and it's probably something you need to check with your doctor. It's more likely that snoring is going to negatively affect whoever you share the room with, or if you're really loud, who you share the house with. I can never remember it because obviously I'm completely asleep, but my wife can tell me that I can snore horrendously, but that most time her just telling me to stop snoring gets me to stop snoring. If you wake up in the middle of the night, don't get out of bed. I can confirm from personal experience that this isn't something I've found to be true. If anything, I find if I wake up in the middle of the night and I stay in bed, I tend to feel more anxious and more stressed and I'm less likely to go back to sleep. Quite often if I get up and go downstairs, and have a glass of water or maybe even get up and go into a different room and read a book for a bit that naturally helps me to relax which in turn helps me to want to get back to sleep i've just written a book called first time dad that's available on amazon it's a 42 week guide to hopefully help men manage their mental health during pregnancy if you'd like a completely free digital copy of this book please let me know and i'll get one sent to you do you think jeff bezos sleeps naked or with pajamas on